You may want to get a different spot to write this though. Um, this is what Mrs. Lee's been anticipating before, and so we're going to deal with it like promised with first principles, but then we're going to go beyond that. I just want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, because you actually have to be very careful with these things, that, th that what we think is true is true and why. Okay, so pens down for a minute, just have a look up. If you recall, um, one of the things that we used to prove all of this stuff, like how to deal with powers, was we used these, um, these expansions. Do you remember that? Right? We used these expansions. Now these are important to come back to because you have to be very careful with saying, oh, this is true, therefore I can conclude stuff from that. For instance, we said that uh, a to the power of n minus b to the power of n equals, and then we had an a minus b to start, just like we always did. And then you've got this gross a n minus 1 b, sorry, a to the n minus 2 b, blah, 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 blah. We had all that stuff in there, right? Now just think about this for a second. If I think about this guy, right? Because this I can write as an index, right? It would be x to what power? Now this would be a negative 1, right? Um, I used to get told like, uh, change the sign, cross the line. So it becomes like, this is underneath, so it's sort of a negative power, but it's just a cute rhyme. There's no reason why it's true. It's just, ah, there it is, okay? Now, let's think about what this means for this guy, right? Can I think about what a to the minus 1 plus b to the minus 1 would be equal to? And quite quickly you realize, wait a second, I'm not in Kansas anymore, right? If I say starts with a minus b, Right? And then I start to say, okay, well, let's now establish the pattern, right? Well, in this case, what's my n? Uh, it's, negative it's negative 1, right? So what will the first term be? Uh, if n is negative 1, the first one should be negative 2, right? And then what will the next term be? A to the negative, I, I'm meant to keep going down, right? Keep going down, so the next one down is negative 3. And then you get a b for some reason. And then what's the next one down? A to the negative 4. And then you get another b. Now hold on a second. Where was I supposed to end? I was supposed to end. All of my a's end up like going down, 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 down. Boom, they're gone. And then you end up with b's. But hold on. These, these a's are not going anywhere. These just keep on going down and down and down. So in fact, you get a problem here because in fact we know for a start this thing is 1 over a plus 1 over b. That's what it is by definition. That's not how it factorizes, right? So you have to think, that's why we come back to first principles. First principles, this is foundation. It's like, should it work? Well, first principles, we know it works beyond a shadow of a doubt. What will happen when we try it out? So I've gone ahead, <clears throat> excuse me. I've gone ahead and I've substituted the first line. There's the difference question. Can you see this is f of x plus h? Yeah. Here's f of x. So far so good? Okay, now, this actually, you know, marvelously, is not that hard to deal with. When you see two fractions and you have to add or subtract them, what is your instinct when you see like a third minus a fifth? What would you do? Common, common denominator, thank you. We've got to get them talking the same language. So what would be a helpful common denominator for these guys? Now, if I had plus h here, that would be nice, then they're both plus h. But the problem is, for example, if I said, oh look, let's make this over five, let's just add two, right? But that's not how fractions work, because you can't just add two up there. A third, a third, the last I checked, is not three fifths, right? So instead of adding stuff to numerators and denominators, I've got to multiply, right? So I will do something like cross multiplication here. I'm going to multiply this fraction by x over x. So that leaves me with x over x, x plus h. I'm going to leave that factorized. You'll see why in a second. And then instead of multiplying this by x over x, I'm going to multiply by x plus h over x plus h, because I haven't changed the fraction. So that leaves me with x plus h over the same denominator. That was the whole point, right? Common denominator. Is that OK? And all of that is over h. OK. I know it looks gross, but that's OK. We've seen things go gross, and then they pan out at the end. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, limit comes out the front. Common denominators, that's fine. So what happens when I... I'm trying to think. X, take away X. So how many X's are left on the numerator? They're gone. But then there's a minus H. Minus H. Then this denominator is X, X plus H. That whole thing is on the top. And then, as we've seen before, if you did it right, you can see there's some cancelling you can do, right? What can I cancel? This h and this h. So far, so good? All right, let's see. What do we got here? So limit h approaches 0. If you cancel your h, what does your numerator now become? Minus 1. Minus 1. Very good. That sign doesn't disappear. And then our denominator? 
It's this x times x plus h business, right? Why don't I any longer have to write this guy? Because we cancelled it. Yeah, we cancelled it. It's divided by 1, which doesn't do anything. Okay, now here's our lovely spot where before I could not put h equals 0 because then you're dividing by 0, that's bad. But have a look at this guy. Can't I put in h equals 0? What will happen? You get minus 1 over... This is just x. And then this becomes x plus 0, yeah. right? So in fact, this is just x. Can you simplify this for me? Minus 1 over x squared. x squared. Now, let's think about this. Let's go back to our rule, our magical rule, right? We said, what if we wrote it like this, right? Well, if this is f of x, what does f dash x become if you think about the rule that we established? What happens to the power? Minus, minus 1, comes out the front. And then what happens to the power? It reduces by 1. That's really sneaky. It's a negative. So when you reduce it by 1, negative 1 turns into negative 2. Just look at that closely. Look at that. Does that look familiar? It does, right? Now, the cherry on top for me is when you think about what does it all look like. Can we get the lights for this, Miss Flanky? Okay, so here's 1 over x. This is the function we were thinking about. It's not that bad, it'll be fine. This is 1 over x, our familiar old hyperbola. Okay? Now, we just determined that the derivative, the gradient function, apparently is what? Minus 1 over? <laughs> minus 1 over x squared. Let's have a look at that guy. There he is right there. Think about this with me. Here's the blue line. It's the gradient function of the red line. The first thing I notice is the blue line's always negative. Why is the blue line always below the axis, always negative? Because the original Hmm. It's minus. Think, think. The gradient of, the gradient of the red line, right? Yeah. From here to here. How would you describe that gradient in words? It's decreasing. It's shallow, but it's decreasing. It's, decreasing. it's negative. What about, what about over here? Decreasing. It's like steeper, but still decreasing. And then here, it's, it's just decreasing. What about over, over on this side? It's decreasing. Oh, look, this is also decreasing. So the first thing is... The red graph, even though it's, it's like located in up and down spots, gradient-wise, what is it doing? And the answer is always decreasing everywhere. Okay? And then the other thing I notice is, see this blue line, right? It just sort of like drops off a cliff, yeah. right? It gets, it's like a little bit negative here, and then it gets real negative. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, this red line, very good. It's, um, it's dropping off at an increasing rate. It's getting steeper and steeper and steeper. What about... What about over here? The gradient function starts really, really negative because this guy is dropping like a rock. You see that? And then it's like, I still stay negative, but I'm not, I'm not heaps negative. I'm just like a little bit negative. What does that mean over here? It's just sort of gently going down, right? It's gently going down. Never turns around though. Why doesn't it ever turn? Because it's an asymptote. See this gradient function, it gets close to zero, but it never actually gets to zero. So, yeah. Is that point there Which point are you talking about? This point here? Yeah. Ah, good question. What does that mean? You can actually read the values off here, right? One. Yeah, 1, 1. Yeah, this is a 1, neg one, one. negative one, negative 1. So, actually, if I drew a tangent right here, it would have an angle of inclination of 45 degrees downwards. 